restless at their plural knots anchored to towers higher than the hills leveled long ago to fill the harbor. These confluences of color form a rope shapeshifter, unlike the glass windows, more like the trees or shadows. It does not bewilder the birds. We're here to celebrate the work of an amazing artist. Janet Eckelman creates experiential sculptures that expand the boundaries of how we experience cities, light, and wind. Her piece titled, As If It Were Already Here, currently residing over the Rose Kennedy Greenway, certainly exemplifies that pushing of boundaries. It is an awe-inspiring work that is both light as a leaf in the wind, yet profoundly heavy and anchored to the huge skyscrapers. When I would go there with my kids, they would just be walking in a linear way through the Greenway, and suddenly they get there and they just want to start playing football and lying down and hanging out. And what is it about the piece, really, that I think from a design perspective that makes you create a, a moment of stasis in a city where you have the problem of the line? It's profound. The idea that people come out of their jobs in Boston and lay down in the middle of the Greenway on the grass is something that is transformative in the way art should be. When I was a kid, I used to take a piece of string and do a cat's cradle. And my first idea, when they did the international competition, that was my submission, was that I would take a piece of string and sew the city back together over the gash created by the highway. That was, that was the idea. And as that began to evolve, as I learned more about the place and the fact that three mountains, Tremont, the Tri Mountain, had been chopped down in order to fill in the water, you know, the land we're walking on, it is those mountains. So they are the empty spaces that you see. We're recalling them because we're walking on them. My process really always goes to history. So where we're standing was the Boston Harbor and is where crates of tea were dropped into the harbor. We began looking at each of the buildings that might potentially support this idea and one of them had the original granite blocks of the seawall when John Adams had his office there. It's sort of just like an archaeologist uncovering the layers of what are here and remembering it and evoking it. So I was looking at the highway and the six lanes of traffic, and that's where the lines that you see in the work begin to evolve from. And the color, it was called the, the other green monster. And I remember the green turning to orange rust. And thinking about like the taillights of the cars moving back and forth for decades. And so that is where the color inspiration is from. Who did the weaving? So I have been working with the same craftsmen for more than a dozen years. They come from the professional industrial fishing industry. And every rope that you see is spliced the same way that the moored ships 300 years ago were tied up here. You know, like the craftsmanship of this kind of work has been passed down century upon century. The splicing, the knotting, the baiting, these are really old, ancient crafts. We worked with engineers and we worked with computer software scientists. The computer scientists created custom software that enables us to model every single twine and every single knot. So we wanted to be able to simulate gravity in a way that allowed uh, Janet to work with gravity as a partner. When you're dealing with cables, you're dealing with particularly flexible nets like we're dealing with in these sculptures. The force flow through them is entirely dependent upon their flexibility and the way they behave. And when it moves, the internal force distribution changes, has to change, which means that they are absolutely complex, absolutely difficult to analyze. I don't know that there is another sculpture that is as big as, as these sculptures. The scale that you're working at is the scale of architecture. It's incredible, it's the scale of a skyscraper. I want my art to shift from being an object you look at to something you can get lost in. And to bring people together where even strangers have something in common based on the art they're sharing. And the work of art is like going outside. Every time you go outside, 
it's a little different. It's like nature, and part of the work is nature. The light and the wind are part of the work, and the time of day is part of the work. It was just a little bit like looking at the Grand Canyon or at the ocean. It was looking at something natural as well as something clearly made. It's touching to remember what I believe was a springtime visit to uh, a kind of festive work and a festive audience experiencing the work from the ordinary life, daily life, the quotidian life of the city. Um, it gives another layer of meaning to the work itself and to the memory of having seen the work that it enabled you to feel sort of uh, a civic pleasure about the way we're all enjoying it together. And then it's like a party, a communal good mood. The weather is good, people are coming and going, and uh, it's not only public art, it is civic art. We're there together. It's part of our civilization, and we are, by and large, civil with one another. It was fun to take the students there. These are fairly sophisticated MFA poets, and uh, like me, they were awed and knocked out and happy, and each one of them did something quite different. It was a happy day. To enact weightlessness, mime, ease, to be unessential. Let the nets pull in a catch, city of fish, ambition cleaved to lures. But behind us, the sky spread with what I took you here to see. Jewel-toned twine, a hundred miles of it, knotted, woven back into itself and mirrored in the glass-plated, oil-colored office buildings where it's tethered. This one-ton sculpture bears 80,000 pounds of tension from its riggings. The material has 15 times the strength of steel. Silent gamelan of wind, sewn garment for the air, tracing exhalations of trees and pigeons. The result was a glimmer and shift knot by knot, turning rope over rope until it was no longer just rope. I remembered then what I read once about patterned energies. There they were, the rift in the sky, the torn light, and the net, not quite the sum of its parts. The art just gives everyone something to talk about. It's, it's caused conversations to start between total strangers here. It's, it's like floating. Um, it looks like a rainbow that's tangled up. It makes me think about, like, music. Because music has this weird quality to make you feel emotion, and make, just like, transform your feelings. And I feel like it's kind of visual representation of music. A rainbow cloud. It makes me think about the ocean, the waves in it. It looks like the northern lights, the aurora borealis but it was also the reflection of the other buildings, you know, and like it was almost she didn't know where to look because there was so much to see in it. Something very unique in a city like this. I like how you can see the whole scenery when you look at it, like it's not blocking the view. It was a different color than what it is now from this angle. And I wonder, I now I want to go walk around it and around it to see all of the different shades of color that it turns. People can see different things all the time. You just have to walk around the sculpture and see it every night. They're coming to see it in the morning, they're coming to see it in the afternoon, and they're coming to see it at night. The piece changes constantly, whether it's daylight, nighttime, and with the wind and with the rain. And at night, it begins a very gradual, slow change in color.
love it at night. I love it during the day. It's very calming, soothing. We have kids sitting underneath the sculpture, reading about art, reading about, you know, just things in general. And it's been really great to see how people have been using the spaces underneath the sculpture. I wanted to lie down on the grass and spend the whole day and the whole night just looking at it. It's almost like a, a whisper. The magic for me is that it's a transparent work. It suggests questions. We went from chaos and traffic and the general stress that causes everyone to something beautiful and serene. And, and because I like photography, then I tried to capture it in all sorts of angles. So it kind of, it gave me some sort of happiness, let's say. It lifts your spirits. There's like that childlike wonder about looking at it that, you know, you can remember when you were a child, but looking at it, you feel that way again. I think it means a lot to a lot of people. I think it, it everybody feels like it's part of them because it's part of the city. It holds the wind in it, which is a kind of invisible force. Something that was invisible becomes visible. It's very magical. It's just a real treasure for the city. Uh, these stories in, in the news have gone uh, national, internationally. Uh, it's put Boston on the map. You know, we can get up to 85,000 pounds of force from that building and 55,000 pounds of force from that building. So in a very real sense, the sculpture that you see out on the Greenway is a true manifestation of the embodied energy of the Greenway. And I challenge you to find another piece of sculpture that works at that level. And bringing this sculpture here has done a wonderful job of, of highlighting the beauty of everything around here. So uh, stop uh, walking and then to look out around you and see the beautiful view that you have. Because normally you are, you are walking and you don't realize what you have it. But if you saw that, so you are looking around that, so it's nice. That moment when I walked underneath it and felt the sense of being sheltered and at the same time connected to infinite space, to sky. It makes me happy that this city has art like this, and it's for everyone. Because you can't help but look up and um, just think. It, it makes you think. It also causes us to look up to dream. We don't get asked to look up enough in life. It causes us to reimagine our place in the whole universe, because now you're looking at this big expanse of sky and sun. It promotes creativity. Yeah, yeah. And I think promoting creativity is what we want for this city. It gives me like a feeling of like, hope because it just looks so like free. Like a bird spreading its wings, flying through the sky. It gives you a lot of hope for what the city can be. What can the wind and chance and play give us to help us see through lines, dancing, twined and intertwined, moving and helping us to see the world around us and, and be taken to the sky in a sense, in a kind of soulful way. The sky sculpture, restless at their pure nuts, anchored to towers higher than the hills leveled long ago to fill the harbor. These confluences of color form a rope shape shifter, unlike the glass windows, more like trees or shadows. It does not bewilder the birds. Thank you.